Good morning from St. John's Episcopal Church in and beyond Old Town Saginaw in the Diocese of Eastern Michigan. Today is November the 1st of 2020, the Feast of All Saints. We also commemorate the Feast of All Souls and we will pray the Necrology towards the end of this service. The bulletin for this morning's Liturgy of the Word can be downloaded from our Facebook and YouTube posts as well as the St. John's website. You can also follow along in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 355. With you at home and with the company of saints, this is St. John's and St. Matthew's worshiping together online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns now and forever in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. 
and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, 
for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, They persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Here we are. This is the week to which our attention has been drawn for years, quite frankly. We are fully saturated with news coverage about election 2020. We're well acquainted with anxiety created by anticipation of this week and its day of decision. Although early voting has made it a month of decision. And we've probably compartmentalized, if not repressed to some degree, uncertainty we have about what November 4th will look like or however long it takes to count ballots. I know that many of you have already voted and others will on Tuesday. You have made your decision about November 3rd. It's important for you to have done so to do so. Our presiding bishop Michael Curry stated recently that While the church must retain partisan neutrality in American politics, that does not mean we should embody moral neutrality, which is to say followers of Jesus cannot ignore our association with Jesus when we engage in public life. We cannot allow a political party or candidate to occupy that place in our lives which should be reserved only for Jesus. So as important as our decisions are on November 3rd, the decision we make about November 1st and November 2nd takes precedence. Today is the feast of all saints. Tomorrow the feast of all souls. The church remembers those who have died in the faith, those we love but see no longer, those who are now in the presence of God the Father in a more profound way. We trust in our remembrance, our observance, that we are still connected to our departed loved ones in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, and we cling to the hope that we shall be reunited with them. Or maybe it's this very hope which clings to us. All saints and all souls remind us, at least they should remind us, among other things, that this world is not all there is. All saints and all souls are signposts that our lives are not simply spinning out of control, even though it may seem like it a lot. All saints and all souls awaken us to the fact that we are not in control of this life. We are not captains of our own destiny. Rather, it is God who is leading humanity, the entire creation, somewhere good. And when we from time to time catch a glimpse of that eternal good, we desire more of that good. So we then choose to the best of our ability to replicate that good in this world. The Christian faith invites us to discern now in this life what is consistent with the life God has in store for eternity. 
How do we even begin to do that? Our faith, our trust begins with and is fulfilled in the God who became human in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, and ascended to the right hand of God the Father. And when Christ returns, when Christ returns, Christ our Lord, our judge, our redeemer, he will make things as they should be, whether we like it or not. So while sometimes we act as if our pet causes can be pleaded and won by arguing divisively, if not sinfully, on social media, as much as we shame others for not thinking the way we do about November 3rd, while we are convinced that Jesus agrees with me on that single down-ballot issue that applies only to my local municipality, how much have we considered... And what kind of decision have we ourselves made about the following question? What do you think of Jesus? What do you think of Jesus? How we answer this question matters more than any decision that partisan American politics will invite us to make on November 3rd or ever. The way we answer the question about Jesus and how we live out the answer, that is what should shape our decisions, not only for November 3rd, but all the decisions we make every other day of our lives, no matter what this sinful, broken, and at the same time, beautiful life throws at us. What do you think of Jesus? Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and all his works, and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, Repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim the word and, by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us an eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are Form 4. 
found in the Worship Bulletin and in the Book of Common Prayer on page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. In the St. John's family, we pray for Bob, Teresa, Barbara, Judy, Brian, Mike, Shirley, Nancy, Al and Jane, Sharon, David and Annette, Rod, Dave, Karen, Ted, and the Standing Committee of the Diocese of Eastern Michigan. For those celebrating birthdays this week, Al Gissendanner, Tom Gaboski, George Keene, and Burris Smith. And for those who may be celebrating wedding anniversaries this week as well. From St. Matthew's, we pray for Brandon, Nick, Janice, Becky, Beth, Rob, Tim, Michelle, Donna, Jason, and Sarah. And Greta Strong has a birthday this week. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. O God, whose days are without end and whose mercies cannot be numbered, Make us, we pray, deeply aware of the shortness and uncertainty of human life. And let your Holy Spirit lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days, that when we shall have served you in our generation, we may be gathered to our ancestors, having the testimony of a good conscience in the communion of the Catholic Church, in the confidence of a certain faith in the comfort of a religious and holy hope, in favor with you, our God, and in perfect charity with the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry 
and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the maker and redeemer of all believers, grant to the faithful to part of the unsearchable benefits of the passion of your Son, that on the day of his appearing, they may be manifested as your children through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father of all, we pray to you for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom in an ending peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.